Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and if you're like me when you get to the end of a project you've got a bunch of stuff like this sitting around so here's my giant that I converted uh, and you know he's all done he used a bunch of different bits to make him he's a huge conversion project and when I got to the end of it I have all these different bits and sprues and stuff left right so what do we do with it and some of you this is probably pretty basic you're probably already on this train but if you're not, I'm going to talk about how to best organize your bits once you're done. This is what I do at the end of every project, okay? And I would recommend you do the same. I know it's easy to get caught up. I know it's easy to say no. I'll just put the sprue to the side. I won't worry about it. I'll just do it later. If you do that, you'll pay for it in the long run. So instead, first thing I do is clip all the extra pieces I didn't use out of the sprue. So that's what you see me doing here. Obviously we're not gonna, I'm not gonna put this whole thing on camera, but just so you get the idea, I'm still careful about it. I clip them out nicely and I make myself a big old pile of all of the bits I've got left from any sprues on the project. Okay, once that's done, once I've gotten all of the bits that I you know, want out of the sprues, nothing's left on the sprue, right? In that case, then, sometimes you have pieces that just need to go together. Like here, I have two sides of a giant's arm, right? And he has multiple arms in the kit, so there's kind of different pieces. And it would be very annoying to store them independently because then you could very easily lose one of them and be like, wait, which arm does this go to? Which piece is this attached to? So when I've got things that are so obvious, front and back of a head, a face that goes on a head, two parts of the same hand, two parts of the same club that need to be glued together or whatever, you know. Whenever you've got stuff that's just obviously needing to be together, well then, I glue it together. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, Vince, are you for real right now? You're telling me that I just finished this whole project, I got a whole shelf of shame, I got a ton of stuff to, to paint, and what you want me to do is stop not do any of that and instead glue together things I'm not even going to paint? Are you out of your mind? Yes, the answer is obviously yes. But the reality is, is that doing this will make your life so much better in the long run. Don't punish future you because current you is lazy. Be the future you, be, be the pr present you that future you will be proud of. I don't glue everything together. It's not like I'm making a whole other giant. It's just the bits that make the most sense. I glue those together. I find the parts like this thing, the back of his head and the front of his face, like, and, and his little interior mouth, right, that goes in there. If I just put all of those into a bits box, as we're going to see, that's going to be a total nightmare, right? Because I could so easily lose one of those tiny little jaw pieces and then not be able to find it. And then that really cool giant face that I have extra, that perfectly useful bit that I could use for a bunch of different projects is now off the table because I've lost a, you know, an important part of actually doing it. He doesn't have a back of a head or a front of a face or teeth or a jaw or whatever, right? So you'll also notice I'm just doing this, all of this with sprue goo. I do it the same way. That way the gaps are pretty naturally filled. Rawr. Uh, and he's, I'm not gonna worry about it any more than that. They're not perfect, but they're good. Okay. So now I've got everything glued together. We're all good. We got one nice big pile of bits. Some are just bits I clipped out. Some are bits I glued together. Now we get out our little hobby acrylic things. These are generally for bead storage. I label them with just a simple piece of masking tape that I wrote on with Sharpie. That way I can store them all. And then I just file them away. Now I try to be organized with my bits, like all arms go in one section and all feet and or all weapons or all faces or heads or you know, other jangly dangly bajangle bits. Lots of our kits come with jangly dangly bajangle bits. And uh, I just kind of make a big pile of all jangly dangly bajangle bits. So then I just put them all in here, file them all away again. The Mega Gargants one here is actually kind of tough because so many of their bits are so huge that they were actually rather hard to fit in even, you know, one of these standard things. I mean, I do it here. You know, I, I get everything in. But uh, these were not friendly to bit storage, I will say. And sometimes, as you saw there with that flail piece, it was so big it wouldn't fit in anywhere in here. 
So I'll show you what I do with those very occasional two large bits. The other most common place that I have that is with like oversized wings or stuff if I'm not using the wings for a project. Um, like sometimes you'll have models that can or cannot have wings. And if you leave the wings off, then you know, you got these big impossible to store, very fiddly things. So we get everything in there. I'm not too gentle with it. If I bend something, it's not the end of the world. Who cares? The plastic is pretty, you know, it's pretty bendy. So get them all in the box. Now, I'll have a link down below where you can find these little hobby things that I use. Uh, I get mine from Amazon. You can also find them at any local craft store. You know, if you go to like Joanne Fabrics or if you have that kind of thing around you or Michael's or I don't know, whatever craft store you happen to have in your area of the world, uh, you will find little storage cases like this. Like I said, they're generally for beads uh, and that kind of art project, so pretty easy. So, And the nice part is snaps shut, locked, set, ready to rock. Okay? All right, so what happens with the giant bits? So I got these two things, like this hand with the net and that big flail. Well, I keep an extra tub here that is just all of my random big bits. So these are like the back, yeah, that's like the Keeper of Secrets, extra cloak I didn't use for Shalaxi, the big... Uh, wings from the Adeptus Mechanicus stuff. There's a set of Archeon wings in there. Those kinds of things. So I just drop those two little bits in there, call it a day. I also store extra busts in that same thing. But that's easy peasy. Another option for big ones is these. So these are these long plastic trays. Um, I'll give you a link to these as well. Um, these are like pencil cases, basically. Uh, so if you have plastic pencil or pen cases, uh, clear acrylic plastic pencil or pen cases. These are really great for big long bits. I store a bunch of stuff like extra spirit hosts. I've got some, you know, Toon King Sphinx bits and stuff like that. But all told, then you get them organized. All these cases lock, snap tight. Everything's fine. You can see when I look at them from the side, everything's labeled, organized, clean, makes later conversion projects easy. I can shake them, bake them. Well, I wouldn't bake them, but I can shake them around. Bits don't move. Easy, breezy, beautiful. So there you go. I hope you liked that. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future, and we'll see you next time.